Hey everybody, welcome to my video on how to install a smart thermostat with your electric baseboard heaters. I will of course preface all of this with uh, the disclaimer that I am not an electrician and this is definitely a cobbled together solution from all sorts of things um, that I found all over the internet. I did pass my wiring inspection um, when I did it myself, so if that helps you sleep at night. And make sure you do turn off your power for all of the different steps in this video. We were fortunate enough to be able to access the insides of our walls and all the raw wiring in this video, uh, but all the concepts should work even if your walls are closed up and you're doing more of a retrofit. But this just kind of shows you what's going on behind the scenes uh, in this video. This should work for either a fan-based heater or a standard electric coil-based heater like you see here. Now, obviously this is gonna take some supplies. Uh, first things first, you are going to need a smart thermostat. Uh, I ended up going with the Amazon smart thermostat, but something like a Nest or an Ecobee will work just as well. You shouldn't need to check compatibility or get a C-wire adapter for this method of installing your smart thermostats. If you go ahead and do that, you'll see that things will tell you that you can't actually use a smart thermostat with standard line voltage baseboard heater. So those aren't gonna do you any good. The second and arguably most important aspect of this solution requires a electric heating relay. Because smart thermostats are low voltage, you can't actually run an electrical wire from your panel through the thermostat. You need a relay to actually transform the power so that it can actually handle it. In this case, we are going to be using the Aub Technologies product, and you can find it on Amazon. It's, it's fairly cheap, um, and you'll want one of these for each one of your smart thermostats. So where do you put these relays? Well, there are a couple of options, which you'll see online and in the actual instructions for installing the relay. Um, the option I chose to go with was actually to get this dual voltage junction box. So this allows you to uh, install the relay into one side of it and run the wires into the other side of it where you can actually run your you know, high voltage or line voltage wiring. Your low voltage wiring that will come out of the electrical relay and attach to your thermostat per code, electrical code, isn't supposed to be in the same container or box compartment as the high voltage stuff. So that's why there's kind of the split dual voltage option here. Your other option is to actually install the relay inside your uh, heater. Um, I'm not sure if that's allowed inside, uh, you know, kind of a, a longer coil baseboard heaters. Um, but some of the instructions do show it being used inside the actual fan heaters. This is going to be a situation where you would have your low voltage and your line voltage in the same compartment. And again, that's not really code. Um, you can probably get away with it, but because my walls are all open and I'm getting an electrical inspection, um, I needed to go with this dual voltage option. Also, by going with the box and putting a wall plate on it, uh, you get access to this stuff where, you know, it's kind of a hassle to have to open up your heater to get access to these things if you ever wanted to. Another third option is it looks like uh, in a lot of cases, code might actually allow you to install the relay on top of a conduit box and you can actually hide the relay behind the wall without access to it. But again, that's not something that I wanted to do because I wanted to be able to access the relay in case I needed to, you know, access the wiring, the thermostat wiring that went into or out of the relay itself. Obviously, you'll need some thermostat cable. 50 feet might be a little bit overkill, but I am installing three of these, so I wanted plenty to work with. You really only need three wires, a red, a white, and a common but I haven't seen any 18.3 wire. In this case, 18.5. 18 is the gauge, five is the actual number of wires. So we'll just end up using three and uh, kind of stripping away two of the unused wires. So the way this is gonna work is we are going to 
line up where we want the actual wiring from the relay to go into the box. And once we figure that out, we are gonna take a 3 8 inch spade bit um, or a hole saw of the same size and actually just drill a little hole into the side of the box um, so that we can actually stick the wires in. So this relay, there is a little collar that clamps onto it just like in a conduit workflow. So once you run the wires through, um, you can actually take that collar and thread it back uh, onto the relay to uh, crimp it into the box. Once that's done, you'll actually install the thermostat wire into the C, W, and R spots on the other side of the relay. I would also <laughs> maybe install the wiring before you attach the relay to the box because it can be kind of hard to thread this wire uh, into the actual the ports that they need to go into while you got the relay attached to the box. Uh, but once you've got that figured out, um, you can go ahead and tighten those things up uh, pretty tight and it should look like that. Now, like I mentioned before, um, you might be dealing with a situation where your walls are not opened up, um, in which case you can get a different version of this box um, that is a quote unquote um, old work box where you're retrofitting it. Um, this box with the nails in it is meant for you know, installing it directly to the stud, but you can get a version where you actually um, just put it in drywall and it kind of connects to the drywall. Um, but yeah, you trace out your hole, uh, measure your box, uh, put your box in place, um, and you'll be sliding it in if you're retrofitting it from the front side rather than um, from behind the wall like I'm doing here. Um, I chose to put this in a location on the reverse wall of where I'll actually be putting the thermostat. So in this case, the thermostat's going in my bathroom and there's a closet in the other room on the other side of the bathroom. And I chose to put the access panel there in the closet um, so that you can't actually see the access panel. Uh, just kind of a cleaner solution, I think. This is, you know, what you should be seeing, something to this effect. You should be seeing your relay wires uh, coming into the line voltage side of the box. You should have your um, wires that come from the electrical panel and you should have your wires that go into the heater. Uh, potentially you could have another branch or two um, if you've got additional wires. Um, going out of this box. So once you've got your different power lines identified, you can start connecting them. So connect all the grounds, the bare copper wires, and push those to the back of the box. Then you can do the same thing for the white wires. This will be your common line. Um, and this is an instance where you actually want to take the blue wire from the relay and connect that up with the white wires. And that's going to provide power to your smart thermostat. You also want to connect your other branches, uh, your other white wires that are in this box to this uh, common connection as well. So what we've got left here is the black wires. On the left, we've got the hot wire, the line coming from the electrical panel. And on the right, we've actually got the wire that goes down to the thermostat. And this is where the switch is going to come into play, the on off function. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to connect the black wire coming out of the relay, as well as any other black wires you've got in there that require power to the hotline coming from the electrical panel. And then the red wire provides power to the heater, the black wire on the right side here. Um, and that will be switched on and off controlled by the thermostat once we install it. The heater wiring should be pretty straightforward. Um, in my case, I installed a new heater. Um, and so this is kind of the process for hooking that up to your power. Uh, but in your case, you might already have wiring in the heater, so you don't need to worry about this as much. So you can ignore this step if your heater is already uh, wired up, but essentially you're just going to do what we've done before. We're going to connect the grounds to usually a green wire um, or a copper wire within your actual heater um, to the ground uh, in the wiring that's coming from the relay. 
In my case, I have a 240 volt connection or circuit and a 240 volt heater. So I have two hots coming into the heater. That's both the white wire and the black wire. You could potentially have a red wire and a black wire. And the heater itself has two black wires. So because I've got two hots, I just connect those right up to the two black wires and the heater. Doesn't matter which one goes to which. If you've got a 120 volt circuit and a 120 volt heater, you'll probably have a black wire and a white wire inside your actual heater. Um, but again, it doesn't really matter. In this case, just connect the white wire up to one of the wires and the black wire up to one of the wires uh, if you've got two black wires. You're usually not gonna wanna touch the other wires that are already connected inside the heater wiring uh, because those complete their own circuit within the heater. Uh, in my case, in a couple of my other house heaters, I actually had a thermostat integrated into the heater, but all I did was unscrew that integrated thermostat. Uh, so once I removed that thermostat, I had a pretty standard uh, two wire setup within my heater. So now we're on the home stretch and we can connect the thermostat wiring into the actual thermostat. So this is pretty straightforward other than the fact that you might have to juggle with the actual wiring itself and how it connects to your thermostat like you see me doing here. Uh, but it's pretty simple. You just connect the red to the uh, R connection, the white to the W connection, and the blue to the C connection if you're using the 18.5 wiring like I did. Essentially, you just want the same color wiring going into the R, W, and C spots as you did on your relay. And once you've got that all connected back up to your thermostat, this should be the setup that you have working, whether you can see the wires or not. You should have your thermostat connected by thermostat wire down into the relay. Uh, your relay should be connected to the wiring from your panel, and you should have wiring going from your relay down to your heater. The last step should be to actually configure your thermostat. So this will be a little bit different, obviously, depending on which thermostat you have. Uh, the Amazon one was pretty straightforward. Uh, I just had to go through the uh, phone based setup system and make sure to select an electrical heat system. Um, but from there, it worked pretty seamlessly. Um, it might be something you have to play around with a little bit to get it working properly. Um, but assuming you do that, and assuming you set the temperature at a point which the heater will actually turn on, uh, you should be good to go. Hope this video helped, and uh, I've got links down in the comment section. Um, I've got links down in the info section in case you want to purchase any of this stuff. So, good luck!